provided by the implantation of an intraocular lens and intraocular lenses have improved over time and since the first lens was implanted in 1950 by Sir Herod the uh, lenses have uh, really grown and today you have different types of uh, materials which are uh, in the foldable variety. So you have silicon, you have hydrophilic, you have hydrophobic lens and then from the optical standpoint you have the normal lens, the aspheric lens and then you have the toric and the multifocal and a combination of uh, toric, multifocal, accommodative, all different types of lenses that are there. Now when you are looking at phaco emulsification, in phaco emulsification you have been able to remove a cataract from a small incision and therefore the intent would be to put the lens through this small incision. So we are not talking about PMMA lenses which uh, and uh, some people may be wanting to implant because of cost but we are talking about lenses which can be folded and then put it through the same in incision without needing to enlarge it. Uh, the initial lenses were, foldable lenses were put by older folders but they are almost obsolete now and nobody uses so I am not going to talk about it. But you have the injector system and there are several injector systems which are there. You could have injectors as shown here which could be made of uh, plastic, they could be disposable injectors that means that for every lens there is one injector or there could be uh, lenses in these plastic injectors which could be preloaded also. But typically uh, the lenses that we use in majority of the times in which we are most comfortable is that there is a titanium injector and there is a cartridge. So this is the cartridge that is there and the cartridge is going to be fitted on the injector. The intraocular lens is going to be implanted into the injector. And this is the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, from the cartridge will come over here in the injector. This is the push plunger that is there. And typically there are two types of injector system. One is the push uh, thing and the other is a screw type. Uh, the screw type is something that we prefer, at least I prefer because you don't get sudden violent jerks. In the push type, if there is a resistance, if you are pushing hard, you could be pushing the IOL, you, have, you must have seen through the conference uh, that kind of a problem that is happening. Now when you are putting in an intraocular lens, the lens has to be placed so that it does not open or is not pushed upside down. So typically when the lens is, it should be an inverted S position. The, you should keep that clear. The other thing that you can remember is that the this haptic always opens to the right. So that is how you know that the lens is in the proper position and then you need to put the trailing haptic normally over the optic and you have to do the injection. So let me just run you through this. To load the Infoner Platinum 1 series cartridge, first remove the cartridge from the inner tray and fill with Elon viscoelastic. Next, grasp the lens with your forceps by the optic edge only and hold the cartridge with the IOL diagram facing up. Engage the lead haptic with the canopy and sweep the lead haptic over the optic body in one motion, leaving half the optic inside the cartridge. Ensure that the lead haptic is fully tucked over the optic body. Grasp the trailing haptic and tuck it over the optic body. Advance the lens past the line marked on the cartridge. Ensure that the lens and haptics remain folded in place after removing your forceps. Next, insert the cartridge bevel tip so that it slides into the handpiece cartridge slots. Push down firmly on the back end of the cartridge to securely snap into the handpiece. If the rod tip makes contact with the cartridge, the cartridge has not been inserted correctly. Retract the rod and ensure that the cartridge is fully snapped into the handpiece before moving forward. So what you need to have shown you uh, as to how the lens is put onto the cartridge and before injecting you need to check the alignment of the plunger with the op and the optics should not, you should not be sliding above it. That means that the plunger should be hitting on the body of the optic and it should not go above or below it. Otherwise you will get a capture and you could break the intraocular lens. So that is very important and always check the movement that when you are screwing the lens, the lens is moving, uh, you check it under the microscope before you actually go into the eye. 
Now, when you are going into the eye, normally you want to go bevel down, otherwise you could have a distance detachment and then when you are putting the lens, you would change the bevel. And that is what uh, you have to follow, you have to uh, gently push the plunger, noting that the IUL is opening in the interior chamber, as you can see, and directly leading haptic into the capsular bag and dial the trailing haptic into the bag and you should dial anti-clockwise. Now, when you are looking at toric intraocular lenses, uh, it has been uh, shown the Varion system, but uh, if you are doing a manual, then you should mark the toric IOL alignment as to how the alignment should be. Now, multifocal lenses or toric lenses have similar loading that I have shown you, and the insertion is similar, but the centration needs to be pretty good. Uh, so, I will not go through the uh, toric. This is a three piece lens. Uh, with the Varion and see the lens is being injected gently with viscoelastic in there and you can see that the low, the haptic is in there and you have pronated the hand and now you have left the haptic outside and you can gently dial it in. A three piece lens is normally difficult to place uh, without using a McPherson or a dialer but a single piece lens can be uh, put into the eye. Now, if you look at this uh, particular uh, insertion that is here, this is tentative by a person and you can see that the lens is being inserted and as the lens is being inserted, you can see that the person uh, who is inserting does not do a proper movement of the hand being turned and you can see because the hand is not being turned, and the lens is getting stuck in the incision and it has not opened in the proper way. So when you are going in, you need to go in and then you need to pronate your hand and you have to therefore be able to see that the lens is opening properly into the capsular bag. Now, what are the commonly encountered problems? I told you if your plunger is not in the proper place, you could, your haptic could get stuck, you could break the uh, haptic or you could, as I have shown you, uh, you would not be able to uh, get it uh, into the proper place as is seen here. Now, this is again a problem which uh, some people, they are tentative and they do not push enough. The injector system can be a wound assisted injector but when you are looking at three piece lenses ideally the injector the cartridge should be within the wound and if you are within the wound it will open well however in this particular case you can see that the person is stuck here and uh, and the lens as you can see because he has not injected deep enough the lens gets stuck in the wound so you need to be having the injector the cartridge within the wound in a three piece intraocular lens or a single piece when you are using plate lenses or you are using hydrophilic lenses you could do a wound assisted injection as if you want. Now the other thing is that at times uh, the lenses do not open or the haptic optic can get stuck this was more so in the Invista lens so what you need to do is that you would gently tap on the haptics even if you by doing the irrigation aspiration or inject viscoelastics or you could do two dialers to separate them. So, so these are uh, some of the tricks that I have tried to tell you as to how you should efficiently be able to put in an intraocular lens. Uh, what are the commonly encountered problems? And there have been several problems. People have injected the intraocular lens into the uh, uh, into the cornea etc. You, you could have the plunger system going in causing a posterior capsular rent. You could have broken lenses. In case a lens breaks and, the, uh, and it comes through the optical then you have to cut it and take it out or uh, you have to explant the lens. But IOL implantation should be uh, taken with due caution and you should do it in the proper manner so that you do not end up with problems there. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.